This one here that we're going to show you today, this is going to be our 705. We actually have a couple of different versions of it. So if you're from one of the companies we work with, you might use a different model. Um, and we can definitely include information on that. This is uh, one of our models here. This is our 705 vascular access phantom. Uh, this one here has, you can kind of see a diagram of it right here. So it's going to have a larger vein. Uh, the vein in the middle is a medium-sized vein that's bifurcated. And then there is a smaller, more superficial vein on the other side there. So um, we developed this material, which is a great material because it's going to give you a really good ultrasound image. It also isn't going to show needle sticks. It will over time, but right off the bat, it won't. You should be able to get a lot of access out of this model. Um, again, we know a lot of medical reps that they use this one for their, for their basically their sales jobs, and they're able to use one of these for about a year. Um, and again, they're using it three to five days a week where most people are going to use it, you know, maybe that many times per month. So on the end here, you're going to see these little dots. So those dots correspond to the different veins. Those dots are centered on each vein. So this one over here is going to be centered on that smaller superficial vein. This is our medium-sized bifurcated vein. And this one over here is our deeper vein. So that kind of gives each person a little bit of a variety on accessing, just like on our 2365 model. So as we look here, I'll kind of go through and show you each one of the veins. So this one over here, this is going to be our a larger, deeper vein. So you can kind of see this vein is about a centimeter in diameter, and it's about a centimeter and a half down. Um, as we move, make sure I got enough ultrasound gel here. Um, as we move up and down the vein, you're gonna see. I'll put that on big screen here. You're gonna see that vein there. As we go towards the center, this is gonna be our bifurcated vein. So at this point on the pad, it's a single vein, and as we move, you're gonna see that vein split. And then you're going to see that the two veins actually start to separate. And at the end of the pad here, that's going to be about their widest width right about there. And then on this side over here, we're going to have our smaller, more superficial vein. So again, these ones aren't going to be the super difficult accesses um, on any of these. These aren't super small. They are straight. But again, it's really to practice that skill set. So again, let's go ahead and let's see how I can do accessing this one. You should see my needle tip right above the vein right now. And then if I can do this right. Yeah, you can see I just broke into the vein. I'm gonna to try to give you guys a different angle here. Hope that's showing up for you guys. Um, so you can see that the needle's in the vein now. So it's a great way to be able to show people how the needle can go in the vein and how you know that it's not out the back wall of the vein. Um, and people can practice over and over again. We see it when we go to shows uh, or whatnot that people basically need that practice. They need to be able to do something over and over again. So if you're able to give somebody a machine a phantom and sit them in a room where they have the ability to sit there and practice 10, 20, 50 times, whatever it's going to take for them to get proficient, then, then that's a great ability to be able to give them. Um, with this model, one of the things that will definitely happen over time is that as you access, you know, I access that time and while I didn't get a lot of blood, I did get a little bit of blood that came out. Um, if I do that a whole bunch and more blood comes out, you will get air bubbles inside the vein. And when you get that, uh, it will reduce the image quality. So what you're going to want to do is these little dots on the end here, they're going to help you refill it actually. And we actually have a video that shows you how to do that as well. Um, you can go in there and you can refill the vein, pull out all the air and be able to get that image quality to kind of bounce back for you. Um, like I mentioned, this is just one of our models. So this is a 705. Uh, we have the same veins as this model here in darker skin. That's our 706. And then we also have a 707 and 708. That's going to be, it's going to have four different veins. And that has a vein that is a uh, slightly more superficial. 
um, maybe about three, it's either three or four millimeters from the skin surface, which about is as close as the skin we can get without the uh, the model leaking kind of nonstop. So, so again, you're going to be able to get thousands of sticks on this. Again, using a 20 or 22 gauge needle, please don't use anything bigger than that if you want it to last longer. If you are doing something where you need to use a larger a needle or you're wanting to practice starting a, a pick line and you're using like an introducer, it will work. It's just going to, to kill the model quicker, basically, and you're going to have a shorter life out of the model. Um, but again, these models should last for a long period of time. When you're done, we definitely recommend just wiping off all of the ultrasound gel that you were using. Um, again, just like on our previous model for storage, you definitely want to put the model Make sure that it's nice in the, in the, uh, the base and then put the cover on. This material is even a little bit softer than our other material. Um, so it is a little bit more susceptible to high heat. We definitely don't recommend exposing it to temperatures over 120, um, which again, if you're in a school setting, won't be a problem. It really is a problem for, for any kind of a sales rep that's out and about and that leaves it in their car. We've definitely had that happen to some people and uh, uh, the pad doesn't survive. So, um, so yeah, it should work with all different ultrasound machines. Um, we tried it with uh, numerous different machines from different companies and it has worked uh, just fine with all of them. Um, the gain on this one, you don't have to adjust the gain super high like I know I've seen with some other models that are out there. You should be able to use it with a more normal gain. We have the gain on this machine at 70% today. Um, so it's not super high. Normally I actually use it a little bit lower, but for the video, it shows up a little bit better. We recommend people break it down anytime they're putting it away. Now in practice, I know that people aren't always going to do that. Um, so my best, I guess my best advice would be is to break it down as often as you can. If it's just going to be a week or so, you're probably just fine. If it's going to be longer than that, I would definitely recommend breaking it down. And if you aren't going to use the model for say probably three months, I would definitely recommend just flushing it. Again, you don't have to. From any of the testing we've seen, we don't see mold develop until at least eight months or more. Um, now, that being said, it can develop probably quicker depending on climate and temperature. But um, it's one of those things where it, it's, uh, if you have the time, I recommend doing it just because it's gonna give you that little extra bit of insurance that you aren't gonna have any type of a problem. Because again, we see it, we do a lot of refurbishing on various IV arms, people will send them back. And when we're taking them apart to put in new skin or new veins into the model, uh, we definitely will see the, the mold in those. Um, we've seen it in some of our models as well. So it's not unique to one manufacturer. Um, definitely just do it as often as you can. The phantoms can be used for anything that's ultrasound related. If you don't need the ability to do ultrasound, then you don't need to buy the ultrasound model. Um, the price point is definitely higher just because of the way we have to produce them. Um, so if it's something that ultrasound isn't needed and you're just needing the, the softer skin, then yes, anything that is our advanced venipuncture model, which is going to be, um, you know, 30% less expensive than, than the Phantom, that would definitely be something you can do. But if you are looking for ultrasound specifically, then yeah, you would need to use this material. The other material is not ultrasoundable. All right. Well, I think with that, I think we'll kind of sign off. And again, just thanks to everyone for, for joining us today. <laughs> um, again, if you have any questions after this, feel free to reach out to, to myself or Brandy. Um, we're happy to hop on a phone call with you, send you an email with the information, or if it works, um, you know, hop on a quick Zoom call or whatnot and, and actually show you something if that might be an easier way to do it. So, so thank you everyone.